Hey guys, Mr. Kreider here. Uh, exploratory. We're in the quarter four. We're moving right along. Uh, let's just get right into the myth, okay? And then out the end, I'll do a few words more and then look and see what some of your questions are and see how I can answer them within the time minutes, okay? All right, uh, so as we left off, the king had sent messengers to an oracle. An oracle is uh, a place where you go for prophecies. Go to the PowerPoint if you're confused about some of those terms, okay? All right. Now, these messengers were eager for the gold that the queen offered, and so they did just as they were told. In a few days, they came back to the king with their false report, and they announced to all the nobles who were assembled at the palace that only when Phrixus and Heli were dead would comfort and plenty come back to the people of the kingdom. The king was very sorrowful at this news, but he knew that he could not disobey the gods. And, with Aino's encouragement, of course, he ordered that the sacrifice be carried out with all possible haste. Everything was prepared, and the children were brought from the hills to the courtyard of the palace and decked out in white robes and flowers, as was the custom in those days for adorning things that were about to be sacrificed. Dun, dun, dun. Here, they were to be tied and placed on the top on top of a huge pile of logs that would soon become a raging bonfire. But just as they neared the spot where they were to be put to death, suddenly there came, flying from the heavens, a golden fleeced ram, which the gods had sent in answer to Nephilim's prayer. Nephilim, you see, had only seemed only seemed to be far away. In truth, she had been watching over her children from above all the while. So that answers some of your questions. Uh, let's see. So, quick as a flash, Phrixus sprang upon the ram's back with Heli behind him. And the next minute, they were flying high above the courtyard, far beyond the reach of the astonished people below. Over land and sea flew the golden ram faster and faster every moment until Heli became so weary of the dizzy flight that she loosened her grip and fell from the ram's golden fleece. She fell down and down and down through the air until she splashed into the water of a narrow strip of sea that happened to be where they were flying over at the time. And she was drowned. But Phrixus, he clung to the ram's back and they flew on over the great black sea until they reached a country called Colchis. There the ram glided gently down to the ground, so tired and weary from this long and difficult journey that it soon died. Phrixus stripped the beautiful golden fleece from the ram's back. He hung it on an oak tree in a dark forest, and there it was guarded by a monstrous dragon that never slept neither during the night nor during the day, so that nobody dared go near the fleece. And Phrixus remained in that land and married the king's daughter. They lived happily together for many years until Phrixus died. And all this time, the wondrous golden fleece hung on the branch of that same oak tree, guarded over by that same dragon. And for many years thereafter, the legend of the golden fleece spread to all parts of the world. No one was able to steal the fleece or to deceive the dragon who guarded it. Now, the last thing here, they have a thing called a few words more. If you notice on your PowerPoint, I put a few of those words there. Let me just read this part to you so you kind of get a little bit of word study. Had it not been for the ram with the golden fleece, both Phrixus and his sister Heli would have burned to a crisp on a bonfire. Although the word bonfire came to our language from the Scots, and much later than that time of the classics, its tie to this tale comes from its original meaning, a bone fire. A bone fire was used uh, for burning of corpses, much like you see um, when someone has a cremation or a ceremonial cremation on a funeral pyre, like, like in some of the Star Wars movies. It may also be interesting to know that the narrow sea in which Heli was drowned was for centuries referred to as Hellas Pont, meaning the Sea of Heli. Today, this strait, which is the northwestern part of Turkey, is called the Dardanelles. 
And when you study uh, the Great War, World War I, in your history class, you will probably talk about some battles that occurred right there. It's a very strategic, important location. Well, make sure you complete the assignments that are uh, in the Google Classroom, and have a great weekend. Bye, everybody. Coronavirus delendus est!